Let's go over body composition. I'm just going to call it body comp right now. And when most people think of body comp, they think of fat. But we need to think of all the major components that make up our body. And contribute to our body weight. So fat, muscle, water, bone, all of those are included in body composition. And your book refers to percent body fat. And BMI. Let me scroll that up real quick so that you can see it. Now, let me go over BMI real quick. It's not good for most people. So you may have been watching The Biggest Loser and they talk a lot about BMI there. You have to be perfectly proportional for it to give you a valid number. And for me, it tells me I'm in grade one obesity. And the problem it has with me is I carry a little bit too much lean mass, a little bit too much lean muscle, and I weigh too much for how tall I am. And it's not good for people that are under the age of 18, people that play sports, people that are short in stature, people that are too tall. So you've got to be careful with BMI. I've seen it really upset people because they get put in this classification when obviously they don't fit into that classification. So let's look at percent body fat. It's a better number, especially if you're measuring people. Um, it can still have some measurement error to it. There are multiple ways of determining percent body fat, and we'll talk about those in just a second. Let's talk about essential fat and non-essential fat. So about five to 25 for men. 12 to 30 percent for women and you're gonna see these ranges vary I know there's a chart in your book and it gives you some different ranges but I'm just gonna sum up what that chart says and essentially for men you don't want to go under 5 percent because you won't have enough essential fat to tap into if you get sick and your body will go after muscle same thing for women you really don't want to go under 12 percent I've seen other books say 9 You'll see a lot of, of different ranges, but they're all pretty close. So and once you go under 12% for women, then you run the risk of not having enough essential fat to tap into. And again, if you get sick, your body's going to go after muscle, and that's going to hurt your metabolism. So you want to stay within these healthy ranges. If you go over 25% for men or 30% for women, you run the risk over time of developing hypokinetic disease. So hypokinetic disease. And I don't think your book talks about this, but I will. I'll refer to it just briefly. It just means low movement. You're sitting on your butt too much. You're not moving around. And you're developing diseases like diabetes, coronary heart disease, some forms of cancer are all related to not moving around enough and uh, high blood pressure there's a lot of different ones that fit in there so to sum it all up guys don't go under 5% ladies don't go under 12 or try to avoid it and don't go over 25% for men and don't go over 30% for women now these ranges vary those percentages I gave you are based off of skin fold measurements and there's a bunch of ways to determine percent body fat. DEXA, it's taking two energy sources and determining how much muscle you have related to fat. It gives you, a, it's probably the gold standard. It's the best of the best when it comes to measuring, but it's expensive and a lot of places don't have it. So you'd have to have, be at like a tier one research institute to be able to um, probably have access to that. A body pod works off of air displacement. It's the next best option for you. Let me scroll that up so I can continue to write a little bit more. And then you have hydrostatic weighing. 
Again, it works off displacement, but this time you're displacing water. This one is off of air displacement. And this one can be kind of scary because you got to get all the residual air out of your lungs when you submerge yourself. And depending on how much water you displace, it gets an idea of your percent body fat. Not used as often anymore. Body pods becoming more useful, mainly because you don't have to feel like you're drowning. <laughs> and then you have skin fold measurements. That's what I was referring to on those percentages above. That's where you're taking calipers and you're actually measuring the fat right underneath the skin. So this is subcutaneous. Ooh, sorry, that's hard to write. <laughs> subcutaneous, that's an E O, oops, U S. Anyway, there's a U right there. So skin fold measurements, and that's measuring a subcutaneous fat right underneath the skin. And then you also have bioelectrical impedance. Impedance. It's hard to write with this pen. And that's sending an electrical signal to your body and fat conducts at a different rate than muscle and it gives you an idea of percent body fat. We have one of these, well we have, we can do both of these on campus here at NLC. If you ever come to campus and want them done, I can do them for you. Just send me an email and let me know. So those are all the most common ways to determine percent body fat. Now there are other ways of course, but those are the most common and the ones, and I can do the skin fold measurements and the bioelectrical impedance. Pretty neat to have it done if you've never had it done. And it would be a good addition to your pretest. Now let's talk more about essential fat. So this is a fat that you need. It's required to live. And then you have non-essential fat. So it's excess fat that you store as subcutaneous and visceral fat. Now let's talk about that for a sec. Subcutaneous. So right underneath the skin and then you have visceral, which is around the internal organs. So this is a fat that we pinch when we're using calipers. And this we cannot pinch. So that's one of the problems with calipers is it cannot give you an estimate of visceral fat which some bioelectrical bio impedance machines can so they're real cheap field test and they can also give you an idea of visceral fat and this is a more dangerous fat to have that's a fat around your internal organs and there's a higher incidence of coronary heart disease associated with visceral fat so I hope this helps you understand body comp a little bit more and the major components of body comp and I will see you in the next video.